Hi guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and I have just got back from doing the North Downs Way, a nice, nice bikepacking route. And in today's video, we are going to be doing the before you ride, everything you need to know before you decide to take on this route. Also, the download for the GPX file will be in the video description. So if you want that, go and check it out. There'll also be everything else you need to know about the North Downs Way. So let's get straight into the before you ride the North Downs Way. Let's do it. The North Downs Way is a mostly off-road ride, starting in Farnham and finishing in Dover, in the southeast of England. The ride uses as much of the official North Downs Way as possible and uses mostly quiet country lanes to avoid the bits that you are not allowed to cycle on. This ride will give you a chance to cycle up Box Hill, descend lots of fun wooded single track, take in some amazing open bridleways and lots of opportunities to stop for refreshments, all while being within a stone's throw away from the built up areas. This route also follows the ancient Pilgrim's Way, the historical way that was taken by the pilgrims from Winchester to Thomas Beckett Shrine in Canterbury. Although this route is quite well signposted, it is best to take a GPS device as there are plenty of sections that you need to come off the official North Downs route to avoid the sections that you are not allowed to cycle on. This route is great whether you want to do an epic non-stop ride or a two to three days of bikepacking with some camping or hotel and B&B stays or even if you just want to do sections as the route is well linked up with public transport, making it an ideal route if you wanted to tick off sections if overnighters are not your thing. If you want to try your hand in a multi-day ride, this route is a great choice as you are never too far away from built up areas and loads of places to stop for pub lunches or cake stops. So if you want an adventure where you don't need to be super self-sufficient, then this route might well just be for you. Beginner or an expert rider, you will have a lot of fun enjoying the trails, especially on a sunny day when the trails are dry and rolling fast. The North Downs Way is a popular route for hikers and cycling, and being so close to built up areas, this route can become quite busy, especially on sunny weekends and public holidays, so you will have to be mindful of other trail users. You are going to want something more suited for off-road. A gravel bike with at least 35mm tyres or a fast rolling hardtail will be your best option. With mountain bike gear in to help you up some of the steep climbs. This ride does have a fair few road slogs so having a fast rolling tyre will help. Overall the train is mostly well packed down mud and if you are riding this route on a dry day then the terrain rolls really well and isn't too rough. If you are following this route during the wetter months, then some sections will become a bit more challenging and slippery, especially the sections that are chalk. But like I say, most of this route is not that technical. And as long as you have good mountain biking gear in to help on the climbs, then you will be good to go. This route offers a variety of places to stay if you don't want to carry extra kit. This ride is very easy to find hotels and B&Bs along the route, with it always being very close to built up areas. If you want to camp, then there are official campsites as well. However, being in a very populated area, you may want to pre-book as early as you can, especially during public holidays. If you want to wild camp, there are places along the route. However, being England is technically not allowed and being such a well populated area, you will need to be good at stealth camping. So setting up late and leaving early while leaving no trace is a must. This route passes through lots of wooded sections. So I think a hammock would be the best option.
This route is well linked up with public transport with train stations at either end of the ride in Farnham and Dover and also in between at Guildford, Dorking, Oxted and quite a few others that are close to the route. Again, being such a well populated area, these trains can become extremely busy at certain times and bike spaces are limited. So you will need to check before booking if you need to reserve a bike space. The difficulty of this ride is going to be a five out of 10. It does have a few steepish climbs to deal with, but for the most part, this route flows really nicely especially if you go west to east. The trails flow nicely and the train is mostly well packed down and isn't too technical. Being always close to built up areas, there are plenty of places to stop, whether that is for refreshments or mechanical assistance. This route doesn't require you to be self-reliant, so it is a good option for those wanting a more relaxed trip with fun riding. My final rating is going to be a 6.5 out of 10. As the riding is really fun, but there are quite a few road slogs to deal with, which is to be expected in such a well populated area, which knocks it down half a point. But I had a lot of fun riding this route, and if you are looking for a more relaxed bikepacking trip, or even your first A to B kind of bikepacking trip, then this might be a good option for you. And riding from A to B type of adventures always feel a little bit more adventurous to me over the loops. If you are based in London or the south of England, this is well worth taking on. Especially if you feel the South Downs way may be too hard for you. This route is a much more easier but slightly longer route. Or perhaps use this route for a little training before taking on the South Downs way. Right guys, there we have it, the Before You Ride the North Downs Way. It's a very, very nice route to ride. Nice and flowy, nothing too extreme. The hills aren't too bad, I promise you. There's a few tough-ish climbs, but it just generally flows really well and it's just generally really a nice route. If you love cafes and pubs and stuff and all that kind of stuff on your bikepacking trips, this is definitely a very good route. Lots and lots of nice flowy single track through the woods and it's just generally a lot of fun. And then towards the end you get some nice open um, fields to fly down all the way into Dover and it's such a, it's just a generally really quite a nice trip to do. So there we have it, there is the route overview. I will leave the link for the uh, download for the GPX down below in the video description. So if you want that, click down there and it'll be there. And until next time, keep smiling, enjoy the adventure.